In this video, we will reveal information given by a whistleblower who was involved in the secret Serpo project, an exchange program involving US military personnel. According to those involved, they traveled to Serpo, a planet of Zeta Reticuli, between 1965 and 1978. Zeta Reticuli was the home planet of EBE-1. For those unfamiliar with the abbreviation EBE, it stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. The whistleblower wants to remain anonymous in order to protect himself and his family. The findings you are about to discover are based on his report. EBE-1 was found in the Roswell crash site near Corona, New Mexico. He was slightly hurt and quickly recovered from his wounds. They found out that he was a mechanic. EBE-1 was able to communicate through pictures with army personnel. They placed him in an isolation room at the Roswell Army Airfield. In September 1947, he was transferred to Kirtland Field, and once again isolated in a medical unit. During this time period, Ebe-1 worked with top military linguists. They were able to communicate with him by showing him photographs. They later developed symbols to communicate words, better known as logograms or logographs. Eventually, Ebe-1 was able to utilize these symbols to communicate his wants and needs. He could eat simple foods, such as bread, fruits, pasta, salads, and cheese. However, meats caused him problems and he would vomit them. Ebe-1 was examined by numerous medical doctors and scientists. They took skin samples, examined his body fluids and conducted x-rays on him. They found that Ebe-1 had one primary organ that worked as his heart and lungs, that organ was combined. He had a simple digestion system. One organ worked as a stomach and one other organ worked as his intestines. They could find eno liver, pancreas, or gallbladder. Apparently, Ebe-1's stomach acted as all of these organs or he just didn't need them. He had small glands on his hands, arms and legs. His glands would enlarge at certain times. Scientists could not figure out what these glands were for nor their use. Ebe-1 measured 4 feet 3 inches tall and weighed 60 pounds. His weight never varied, however, his height did. During the winter months, his height would increase by about one inch. His body generated heat by some means that our scientists could not determine. Ebe-1 wore a tight-fitting one-piece suit. That suit was all he needed to maintain his correct body heat. The suit was made of an elastic material that retained warmth and kept out cold. He had a body heat of 101 degrees which seldom varied. Although they provided him with a blanket, he rarely used it. Ebe One's blood was light red but contained similar cells such as red and white blood cells. This blood also contained numerous things our scientists could not identify. Ebe One's body did not require a large quantity of water fluids. He was able to extract the fluids required to maintain his proper levels through the breakdown of food. His body was able to somehow determine the correct amount of fluids required and eliminate the remaining unused fluids. It was determined that eating was not a pleasurable activity for him, but rather a necessity. Ebe-1 was always calm, kind and very considerate. He never got excited, rude nor was he mean-spirited. He was very social, even though he couldn't understand others around him. He liked to touch people and learned that holding a human hand was a common social practice. 
he was very docile. Even when scientists were poking and examining him, he seemed to understand as he just let them go about their business. He was always willing to communicate or attempted to communicate. He quickly learned the symbol system and eventually learned our language in a very simple way. In 1950, Ebe One was moved to a special facility created for him at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. He lived in a little three-room apartment. His handler, who was assigned to him in 1949, joined and lived with him in the apartment. They became such great companions that neither wanted to separate. It was found that Ebe One could not speak our language because of the lack of vocal cords in his throat as the Ebens communicated via tonal inflections amongst themselves. A brilliant doctor developed a device that was implanted into Ebe One's throat which allowed him to speak English. Although crude, he was able to speak simple sentences and eventually communicate through English to his handler. During the entire time, Ebe One was alive he had medical problems. He developed a rash on his body that irritated him very much. Several different medicines were tried and eventually, the rash went away. Ebe One developed a cough that seemed to be connected to a food allergy. They found that certain fruits would cause the cough. Eventually, the cough subsided, but he was left with a sore throat. Ebe One was shown the items recovered in the Roswell crash site. He was able to teach us how to utilize the communication and energy devices. We also found a medical kit, which contained small injectable tubes. Ebe One didn't know what each item was for, but he explained they were for injuries. Scientists experimented and determined that each tube contained a chemical substance. Not knowing what they were for, they were cautious not to use them on Ebe One for fear they would do more harm than good. There was no rescue mission launched for Ebe One. The only two Ebon crafts that were near Earth crashed at the same time. Ebe One did say they sent a distress signal to Planet Serpo but it would take at least nine months for the nearest rescue craft to reach them. Ebe One died in 1952, and his body, along with those of his crewmates, was returned to the Ebens in 1964 during the meeting in New Mexico. The Eben craft was stored in Ohio and then moved to the Nevada test site. There were two other exchange missions, the whistleblower who gave us this story was never involved and couldn't give us details of those missions. The only surviving Eben was taken to the Roswell base and placed in the custody of the lead intelligence officer. The Eben was totally isolated. He was moved to Los Alamos the next day by a military convoy. The Eben died at Los Alamos in 1952. He was isolated from almost everyone although President Truman saw him. No Navy JAG was ever involved. The Ebens did not have the teletransporter technology as some pretend, although they can venture through space defying the time barrier. We hope you enjoyed the content. Please subscribe, like and give your own thoughts. Thanks for watching.